Hey everyone, it's Tracy, and in this tutorial, we're going to focus on creating this vector hourglass complete with grainy sand. This tutorial is based on a request coming in from Instagram, and it builds on the recent glowing light bulb tutorial that I posted, which I'll link at the top of the video. Just like the light bulb illustration, this is 100% flat vectors, including the sand, so it's infinitely scalable and printable at any size. It's created using a combination of the shape, transparency, and fill tools, as well as a few effects along the way. It's a little more complex than the light bulb for a few reasons that I'll mention as we go through, so let's get started. We'll start out by creating a new document. Now I mentioned we're going to be working with flat vectors, which means no pixels are involved, therefore the DPI doesn't matter. If you do plan to add texture, especially if you plan to print it, make sure your DPI is set to at least 300 and you set the size of your document to the largest size you plan to print. Now I've gone ahead and pulled in a rectangle across the entire canvas and I've used this dark gray fill as my background. You can choose whatever background color that you'd like. I want to start out by adding the gradient that's going to be the light source that drives my shadows and highlights. So I like this dark gray color, but I want to grab the fill tool and just drag out a basic linear gradient. Now I know that I want my light source to come from the top right and all of my shadows to fall to the left. So I'm going to reverse this in the contextual menu. I'll go up to this node up here and tap it. And I want to use this sort of off white color. Now that's a little too much. I want to bring back some of that dark gray. So I'm going to adjust the sliders. I'll use the gamma slider here. And I think I'll pull this down just a bit. This is non-destructive, which means that I can go back in at any time and make adjustments if I'd like. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and call this done. So we're ready to start creating the hourglass shape. There are a number of ways that you could approach creating the hourglass, but the most efficient and effective way is to use one of the built-in shapes. And in this case, I'm going to use the teardrop shape. So I have this white fill selected with no stroke. I'll go into my shape tool and select the teardrop. I'm going to create one side duplicate it and flip it, and then we'll add both of them together. So I'll just drag out my shape. Now when it comes to the shapes that are built into Designer, before you convert them to curves so that you can use the node tools to make adjustments, some shapes have these little red nodes that can help you fine tune your shape before you convert it. In this case, I want to drag this one up slightly just to round out my shape a little bit more. And I might make it a little wider. Okay, I'm not going to worry about flattening out the bottom or the top of this because we're going to be adding caps to the top and the bottom using the rectangle tool. So I'll just go ahead and select this, go to edit, duplicate. I'll flip it with my transform tool. So I'll use a vertical flip and then just drag this up. I'm holding my finger down so that it stays in line and I want the tips to overlap slightly so that I can use the add function in the geometry tools. I'll select both of these shapes, go back up to edit and hit add. We have a good start, but the middle of this is a little too pointed. What I want to do is use my corner tool to round off this area right here. Now this is already a curve, so I don't need to convert it, but I want to select it. I'll go to my corner tool and I just want to drag across and select these two nodes. Now, of course, with the hourglass, the middle is very pinched to prevent the sand from pouring through all at once. So we want to keep it relatively narrow but I'm just gonna drag the radius up just a little bit just to round that off. I'll hit bake corners so that if I scale this shape up and down, those corners will scale with it. And now I'm all set. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and I wanna duplicate it two times. One is going to be a backup just in case. The other is going to help us further define the shape once we use the transparency tool. I'm going to turn off the bottom two duplicates and let's go ahead and make this top one transparent. So I'll select the transparency tool. It looks like a wine glass and I'm just going to drag out an initial transparency. Now it's automatically giving me a linear gradient. I actually want this to be elliptical. So I'll just tap the contextual menu here. Now this is one of those instances that I mentioned earlier that's a little bit more difficult than the light bulb shape that was in the other video. And the reason for this is the shape itself. You only get one of these gradients per shape. So I'm going to drag this down to the middle and I'll hit reverse. And what you can see is that it's a little difficult to get a nice rounded shape 
even using the elliptical tool. What's going to happen is that the very middle here is all but invisible, but that's why we went ahead and created the duplicate. So I just wanna get my shape to about where I want it to be. So I'll just use my sliders here. And then I'm going to go back up to my layer studio and turn on that duplicate, select it. And I want to flip it from a fill to a stroke and clip that stroke inside. What I'm going to do is blur this out. So I'll go to my FX studio, make sure you select it, turn it on and then just drag up. And I'm gonna bring it to about 75. All right, I like the blur, but I want to knock it back a little bit as far as the opacity goes. So I'll go up to my layer options, I'm going to turn this to screen blend mode and then drop my opacity a touch. So all that's doing is bringing back some of the definition that was lost from using the transparency tool, but we still get that nice little haze from the transparency tool. Okay, so we have a good start, but this is still looking pretty flat. We want to add some more highlights and some shadows to it to give it more definition. Before I do that though, I want to add the top and bottom caps just so that I have a template for where I want to put those. So I'll grab my rectangle tool and select just this brown color that is temporary. And I'll just drag one out. I don't need that stroke, just the fill. And I'm going to two finger tap and drag this down. And then we'll just make sure all of them are aligned. So I've selected all of my layers. I'll go into alignment options under the transform studio and just choose align horizontally. So now I have those in place and now I know where I want to put my shadows, but let's go ahead and start with our highlights first. I'm going to use a series of ellipses from the shape tool to create my highlights. Now I know that my light source is on the right side. So I want the majority of my highlights focused on the right and my shadows to fall to the left. I'll grab a white fill here, again, no stroke, and select my ellipse tool. And I just want to drag out a few ellipses here and there. And I'll turn this one. And I'm going to put one right about there. And maybe a smaller one here. I'll select all of those and group them. And I want to clip this into place inside that original shape. If I don't do that, when I blur these out, then it's going to seep into the other shapes and I don't want that. So I'll just drag that in, go to my FX studio, choose Gaussian blur, and then blur those out. I don't wanna to go too far, but enough, they read more like a highlight than an ellipse. I'm going to add one more that's going to be separate of those that I want to be a little less blurred than the others. So I'll grab my ellipse tool again, and I'll just drag out a shape, and I wanna pull it into place right about here. And I think I might do one more up here as well. Go ahead and select these two and group them. And again, I'm going to blur them out a little bit less than the others. So they're a little more defined. And I want to make sure I clip them into place. Now these are all adjustable. They're non-destructive edits because I'm just using shapes to create them, which means I can go back in here at any time and make adjustments to them. If I feel I want to pull some of them out and blur them a little bit separate than the others, I can do that as well. For right now, I'm gonna go ahead and call these done and I wanna create the shadows next. I'm going to use this dark blue-green fill to create my shadows. I very rarely use black to create shadows unless I'm actually adding it to a black object. Since this is a transparent object, I can have a little bit of fun and use a color instead of using just a, a plain gray. So just like with the highlights, I'm going to use shapes to create it, but I'm going to do it with the pen, the pencil tool. So I'll select that blue green fill and select the pencil. And I know that I want to place some shadows right about here under the top cap. And I want some here at the bottom of this bulb and just a smaller one on the right side. I'll go ahead and add one here on the left and then a little bit of one peeking out here. Now I had the stabilizer on, but don't worry about how these look because again, we're going to be blurring these out. And I'll select all of them and group them 
I also want to make sure that they're all closed shapes. So let me select them again and go to my node tool and hit close. I want to clip them inside of that shape and then use the FX Studio to blur them out. I'll go back up to that layer group, go into my layer options. Now, if I choose multiply as my blend mode, it's going to make them black. It's going to remove the color. So I'm going to use darken and just drop the opacity a touch. Just like with the highlights, these shadows are non-destructive, which means that I can adjust them at any time. So once I place the sand inside the hourglass, if I feel like they need to be adjusted, whether it's color, blur, or the opacity, I can do that. But for now, I'll call these done. Now that my shadows and highlights are in place, I want to add a brass gradient to my top and bottom caps to give them more dimension and more of a rounded feel like the rest of the hourglass. I'm actually going to delete my bottom shape and add the gradient to the top adjust it however I'd like, and then just duplicate the shape and drag it to the bottom. I could also create my gradient and save it to my styles menu in my FX studio, and then just apply it to the existing shape. For the purposes of this tutorial though, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate, but if you'd like to know more about how to use styles and affinity designer, I'll link to my tutorial dedicated to that at the top of this video. So again, my light is on the right and my shadows are on the left and I want to follow that with my gradient. So I'll grab my fill tool and with that shape selected, I'll just drag out a linear gradient. I want to reverse it so the lighter side is on the right and I'm just going to tap and add some random nodes across. I can add more if I need to, I can delete some if I need to as well. I'm going to take this left side and I'm going to drag it down. I want it to be dark Again, it's in the shadows. And I'm actually going to make this right side slightly darker as well. Even though it's on the side where the highlights are, I do want it to be slightly darker so that it has a feel as if it's receding into the background and rounded. And then I'm just going to follow all the way across. I'm gonna tap each node and make changes to add either shadows or highlights, however I see fit. So I'm gonna drag this one up nice and bright. I'll make this one a little bit lighter, but not as bright as the other. And then I'm just gonna follow it all the way across. I'll back out and see how this is reading. I like how this looks. I think the right side is just the right amount of shading on the far right to make it look like it's rounded off. I'm going to duplicate and drag this down. I'm holding my two fingers down to keep it in line and I'll snap it into place. Now I do want to make adjustments to this because I don't want it to look exactly like the one on the top. And because this is non-destructive, I can simply select my fill tool and that shape and just adjust some of my gradients. The biggest thing that I want to do is make this left side slightly darker than the top because it's at the furthest point from the most light in this illustration. So it would technically be the darkest. So I'm just going to darken some of these here just drag out some of the nodes. And I think I'm going to delete some of these and move them over. Again, I'm just trying to make it so it's not exactly like the one on the top. Again, I'll back out and just see how it's reading. I like how this is looking. One final thing that I want to do to this bottom piece though, is I want to grab my rectangle tool and a dark brown. And I'm just going to drag across a rectangle on the very bottom and clip it into shape, into the shape rather. I'll select it and go to my FX Studio, grab Gaussian Blur, and I'm just gonna blur that up. And then change the blend mode to multiply and drop the opacity. It's just adding a bit more shadow since this is the bottom piece and furthest from the most intense part of my light source. So I have that in place. The entire hourglass shape is done. And at this point, I'm ready to add the sand. I want my sand to have a dimensional feel. I'm going to create three different shapes using my pencil tool. They're going to vary in color. And then I'm going to add graininess using the noise effect in the color studio. And then finally some shadows and highlights using the fill tool. So I'll select my pencil tool. And I wanna start with this sort of sandy yellow color, no stroke. I have my stabilizer on just to give myself a nice smooth line. And I'm going to start with the top here. Let's draw sort of peaks and valleys. I don't have to be perfect because I can adjust these with the nodes. I'll grab my node tool and close that off to make it easier to adjust the shape. 
And then I want to clip that into place inside of the hourglass and then move it down beneath all of the shadows and highlights. Now, obviously I need to make some adjustments here in the middle. I want this to read as if the sand is sitting on the bottom of the bulb here and here until it gets to the point where it starts pouring down. So I want to grab my nodes and just make some adjustments. I can also use my handles where I need to. And then I'll just drag this in here. Now I want to make the bottom shape and then I'm going to add the two together. So I'll grab my pencil tool again and I'm just going to draw out sort of a kidney bean shape. Again, close it and then clip it into place and add the two together. So I'll select both shapes, go to edit and add. I want to make a few adjustments to this, namely that these two nodes here are sharp and I want them to be a little bit curved. So I'm going to grab my corner tool and select them and just drag my radius up just to give it a nice rounded feel as if it's pouring in there. I want to bake my corners so that if I need to scale this down, it'll scale with it. And then I'll just make some final adjustments to the shape here. I like how that's reading. Now I want to create the back two pieces that are going to be slightly darker to give this some dimension. I'm going to darken up this sandy color just a touch just by dragging down on the color dot. Once again, I'll grab my pencil tool and I'm going to keep the top and bottom shapes separate. I'm not going to add them together this time. And I'll just draw out a rough shape here. Again, close it off. Grab my pencil tool again. And I want this to dip down. And then I'll take these two shapes and drag them inside the hourglass and then behind the larger shape. Just back out. I like how these two are reading. I'm actually not going to adjust those at all. But what I do want to do is add a little bit more dimension. These are really flat. They're not quite reading as sand. So the first thing I'm going to do is select all three shapes, go to my color studio, and I want to back out from swatches to the color wheel. And I'm going to drag my noise slider up to somewhere in the 50% range. So that gives me that graininess. But I still want to add a little bit dimension with some highlights and shadows. So I'll use my fill tool for that. And I'm going to add a gradient to each of these shapes, starting with the larger piece. Now, again, I want to follow the light. So the light is on the right and I want shadows on the left. I'll just drag out a linear gradient to start, but I actually want this one to be an elliptical one. And the reason for that is I have two pieces, one on the top and one on the bottom. So I'm gonna reverse this and rotate it. I want these two lighter pieces right about here. And I'll just drag this out. Whatever I change this one to, this one at the top, let's go ahead and select that again. This one at the top is going to change the exact same color. So I'm just going to drag up to make that lighter and I'll drag this one down. So I've tapped there and I'll do the two back pieces as well. Now for these, I'm going to use linear gradients. I don't need to use elliptical. For this bottom piece, what I want this to look like is as if light is dipping in here in the middle and there's more shadows over here and it sort of matches the color of the bottom one. So I'll select my shape, grab my fill tool, and just drag out my linear gradient. I wanna pull this one into place and I'm going to brighten that up. And I'm actually going lighter than the sand in the front. For this one, I'm going to tap the node and I just want to sample the sand down here and then tap to select it. And I'll just drag down a little bit or up. It doesn't have to match exactly, but I wanna get it as close as possible. Not quite there yet. All right, let's do the top piece now. Again, I'll just add a linear gradient. This is going to be slightly different because I have this piece over here that's sort of blocking that one. 
and make it a little bit darker, but still lighter than the left side. And then again, I'll sample here just to sort of change the color a little bit. Pull that out and I can always use the gamma sliders to adjust. All right, I'm going to back up and take one final look at my illustration. I feel like my highlights and shadows on the glass are reading nicely, but if I needed to, I could go in because they're all broken out separately. I could change the blur on them. I could also go in and change the opacity of them if they're overpowering everything inside of the, the actual hourglass, but I think they're reading nicely. The same goes for the shadows. I could make them more intense if I needed to, but I think they're just right. The sand can be adjusted, whether it's the highlights or the shadows or the shapes themselves, because again, we're working with nodes. So by combining a few shapes with some geometry functions, your transparency and fill tools and adding some noise, you can create a 100% vector hourglass shape. Best of all, these same steps and tools can be used to create similar illustrations as well. If you have any questions about what we covered, ask them in the comments below. And remember, this tutorial came in as a request from Instagram. If you have your own request for something you'd like to see covered here, let me know that as well. This tutorial is a good example of my overall teaching style. If you'd like to check out my full length classes in the Affinity Suite and more, take a look at my Skillshare channel, which I've linked below. If you're new to Skillshare, you'll receive the first month at no cost so that you can take a look at unlimited classes. And remember, I have lots of other shorter tutorials here on my YouTube channel as well. You might want to check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching and happy creating.